So welcome to another war game review from the playersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at a game from GMT that came out, I think in 2017? It says 2017 no, on the box. November or something. Um, and it's called Wild Blue Yonder. Mm -hmm. And this is um, kind of an amalgamation of a lot of different kind of games and expansions in the Down in Flames series. Um, so this, this particular box set was designed by Chris Janik. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but basically, I think in like 1993, GMT released Rise of the Luftwaffe, which was like the first Down in Flames game, um, and subsequently they've done a bunch of different expansions or other kind of standalone games. Um, C3Is had a bunch of modules and different things that, that they've kind of built on that system, and this they came out with is kind of just kind of the essential addition. They bring a lot of the elements of those together. Um, whilst still being different. So if you've got all that stuff, apparently this, you know, this is still, there's new content in here and it's not just a reprinting of those campaigns and stuff. Um, so this is kind of, I was excited to play this because mm -hmm. Down of Flame is one of those really famous games. It's played at conventions and they have big tournaments because it's a really short playing card game. Um, and that's kind of what sets this aside from a lot of the war games that we play. Um, essentially, this is a tactical card game um, you'll have, you know, an element of fighters, which is usually just a leader and a wingman. So you might have two cards, and your opponent's going to have two, and you're just, and you have relative position by turning the cards and kind of facing each other. You have altitude markers to determine how high or low you are, and then you just have a hand of action cards, and that's what you're using to kind of play against each other. And the and the action cards are a, a, a mixture of maneuvers, different kind of flight paths that you can take various attacks at different strengths and, and some kind of extra bits and pieces. And, and they're action and reaction cards. Yes. So which I, is very you know, cool. I might try and attack you, and then the opponent's going to play a response to that where they're trying to do a barrel roll to get away. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, if I've got a barrel roll, I can kind of follow them with it. I'm going to counter your counter by yeah, doing then, what you yeah, did. Then, then you're going to play yeah. a scissors to try and kind of swing mm -hmm. back on me, and then I'm going to do some other things. So that you get some really cool dynamics of just like, playing cards against each other, and then, you know, if if the attacker succeeds, then you do some damage, or you, you know, improve your position. If right. the winner succeeds, you know, that was ineffective, nothing happens. And you just keep going until you kill or damage enough of the enemy fighters where they're dead, or they fly away, or at the end of six rounds it's done. And the rounds are, you have a turn, I have a turn. It's very, very quick. quick. Like that. So, I mean, that's, that's really what the game is. There isn't, um... You know, it's not a massively overly complex game. Rulebook's twenty pages, um, but really, it's twenty pages because because this is a tournament game, so they have to be quite explicit about the rules. Um, but but honestly, it's just moving, positioning, trying to shoot each other down. Um, the actual gameplay is really really simple, and that's something that I enjoyed about yeah. the game. Very quick. I mean, a, a whole game takes fifteen minutes. Yeah. So um, having said all that. What's something that kind of you enjoyed about this game? What did this bring to the table? Well, you you said it already. I, this game is highly playable, and what I mean by that is, you can sit down and I think in twenty minutes really really get the concepts. And we've played how many games? Four? We just played four in a row. Yeah, and very very quick. Um, so once again, highly playable. There, there's a lot of strategy in it though, and and I think you did a really good job, particularly our last game. It's about hand management. Each each side, Axis or Allies, has a different hand limit, in essence. And then you have different performance ratings on your card that determine how many cards you get to draw every round. You also have some modifiers for your, your altitudes, high or low. Low, you get an additional card. High, you're not going to draw as many. So it really boils down to what I really liked about it was it really is, an, is a hand management game. Yeah, trying to think ahead about how your opponent's going to respond. For instance, this last game, and I knew it was happening, but I <laughs> couldn't do anything about it. I had, I think, two hits left, and you played a card that dealt two hits to me. So I had to get away from that, or I was going to lose that aircraft. So I kind of played a counter, and then you played a counter, forcing me to play another counter, and then it's like once all those counters were done, you kind of we wipe them off the board, and then you went for the yeah. kill shot. You, you actually pulled out the the one that would have destroyed my engine, 
but it also did two hits. So it was yeah. like a, it was like overkill, but, <laughs> and I knew that was coming, but there's not much I could do about it as far as I had to fight with everything that I had, hoping he didn't have that, that yeah, final that card. Was like a bluff from me of like, right. But if, if I somehow could have had one more defensive card, yeah, I would have got away. And then you would have been... Then I had to... Had no cards. Yeah, because I've wasted them all trying to right. do it to you. I had one or two, but it... So once again, it comes down to a hand management, trying to get up, get the cards that you can use effectively to do the most number of hits and or to do those special hits. Engine hits. I really like the cockpit Yeah, that was hits. cool. And I punched him right in the cockpit. Sorry, bad, <laughs> bad pun, but... You know, when you hit someone in the cockpit, they lose performance. So they lose the ability to draw yeah, the uh, hand, one the card. Yeah, the hand size goes down. Right. So it's a matter of, yeah, I shot your cockpit up, and now you're down only drawing, say, one or two two, two cards a turn. Yeah, instead of being able to have seven cards, I've now got six. And I'm like, Whoa. And it's really... So anyway, it's about resource management and hand management. I, I really liked it. Yeah, it, it was neat. This feels a really cool niche in that it's really quick. And you just mm -hmm. you play it, and with a quick game like this, it's very low stakes, right? Yeah. I'm not like super massively heavily invested of 45 minutes worth of time of trying to position and get this. It's like, buh, 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 buh. ah, it's over. I lost. Yeah. Play again, and that's really cool to have that in a war game with his historical kind of theme to it, and and a great theme. I love the air war. Oh, it's fantastic. Um, yeah. And there's a ton of extra stuff in this box. We just did kind of the dog fighting. Right. Uh, maybe we'll do a campaign at some point. But there's a bunch of campaigns in this where you fight the whole of the Battle of Britain. You'll fight Which would in, be in, awesome. Yeah, you'll fight the Desert War. You fight in Barbarossa. Mm. And and there's so you'll have dog fighting in that. But there's also uh, but there's also <laughs> but there's also um, like bombers in in this as well. Normally in dog fighting you don't use the bombers. But in this one, it's, you know, you've got bombers that you're going on bombing runs and you've got planes to protect them with. So not only you've got to do the dark fighting and fight off um, the, the attackers, but then you have to do the bombing runs and have accurate bombing as well. So there's right. a lot of extras in this box. You can make this game kind of as big as you want. Well, and the cards, it's really kind of cool. These are multi-use cards. In essence, they have, there's the stuff for the dog fighting, and then off to the side you have... Kind of a hit determination, whether you're, and I assume those are for bombs. Yeah, for bombs, you've got hits. And, and what was the other direct one? Direct hits. And I don't, I don't remember what that one was, but yeah, That's so flag. hits, direct hits. So it the, the cards really are multifunctional. They're multi-use cards, and they're actually designed very well, because I don't think of the, the parts of the information don't really affect or cause difficulty in understanding yeah. what you need for that part or the part that you are playing. So in many ways, this is a modular game, too. You can, like we did, just do some 20-minute dogfights, and then uh, if we want to sit down for, I assume, a couple of hours and do a campaign... Where you play a series of games, yeah. which have a lot of extra rules to them that right. you have to get down pat, but, and there's a whole separate 40-page rulebook for that. Right. And that's because of all the campaigns they included, they're all extremely different. And so you don't just play a campaign. You're like, oh, I've got seven more campaigns that are just like that. Right. They're all they're all so they're different. All very very okay. very different. Having having kind of looked over and, and and poured through that a little bit. So that's something that's really cool. And I'm just going to show if you were to watch the unboxing. Great insert the, too, by the way. Really. The nice. amount of cards in this, the amount of fighters you get, it, it's insane. Um, we played four games. And we use different fighters every time. Yeah, use different fighters every time, and you know different periods. So we did some early war yeah. cards from like 1940, 1941, and you've got like just horrible maneuverability and a really small hand size. So you're like, yeah, you just don't have as many options. And then we played yeah. some late war where you've got insane turbocharged engines, really high horsepower, huge hands. You know, you're soaring through the skies at high altitudes, <laughs> blowing each other. It's just, yeah, you know. So cool. I, I like that because it, it's just more fun. It, it was really fun when we did one of the long chains where you would attack, I would counter. You would counter my counter, I would counter your counter of my counter. And yeah, we did fun. three or four that's times fun. and it's like, oh, that's really cool. But once you, again, it all comes down to, am I wasting all of these cards? But that's what I like though. That's what yeah. I love in this game is that that push your luck element where it's like, yeah, it's really cool. I'm going to wreck my hand, but like, 
is I'm going to get away from this. going to be worth Yeah, it. right. And that's that's what I really, really enjoy from this game. That's fun. And it's, a, you know, there's an element of just like the card game war. Yeah, like, it, it feels You've got to have the counters way. and it's like, bah, da, 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 da. Ah, yeah. I lost that out. I take a few hits and we move yeah. on. But it's it's really cool in that way. There's a there's so many cards in here. This game has a ton of replayability and the community yeah. for this game is huge. Well, um, and that's something we didn't really talk about because we didn't play a multiplayer. But I I would love to have. What does it play? Does it play up to like four or five? Basically, no limit. No limit. So you could have ten guys. You know, maybe five Axis and five allies, Absolutely. or you could do. The, the Axis planes are really great, and the Ally planes are kind of weak, so you have more Ally and there's, players. And there's a ton and, of balancing for that yeah. as well. They say, you know, oh, oh you've got some big fighters over here, while well, these guys get like an extra element, so you've got, right. you know, it's a, a numbers game and against like a, a weaker swarm. You can do tons of stuff with this. And that, that would be really fun. Yeah. I, I'd the, like to try that. The game's incredibly well supported. There's a big million community. iterations of this game. Uh, but I we've never played before, so this was kind of right. like the definitive. Start here. If you've not played Down in Flames, pick this up. This is kind of where you want to have a jumping off point. Yeah. But yeah, this it can do almost anything you want it to. You could play with a billion people, mm -hmm. uh, where you have you know it would be almost like a genuine dogfight of just this crazy rolling ball right. of jumping on each other and attacking yeah, each other. Yeah, would be. So my question with that, this is a different. We don't usually do this because we have a certain size deck. Do you then divide this deck amongst the players? Everyone would have their own deck, I think. So you would have to buy, have have multiple games? Because there's yeah. a lot of cards. This is, what is that, about three inches worth of cards? Not quite. This is a three inch. Oh, box. so it's a two two inches worth of cards. I mean, that's a lot of cards. Yeah. So I wonder if you would divide them up. But yeah, if you have ten people, you're not, you're going to need I think you'd decks. have to probably bring your own deck. Right. I would just, for balance sake. Right. Yeah, that, that interesting. I would love to play this with five or six friends. I think it would be fantastic. Yeah, that would be very, very fun. But just to uh, see. What we'll do is we'll kind of show you a little, just a very quick snippet. It doesn't take a lot of just kind of what this game looks like on a table and how to play it. And then we'll come back and wrap up with a few final thoughts. So uh, here's a look at the game. Uh, you can see it. there's not a lot to it. Really, you've just got kind of two elements. Now, these are my Fock Wolves down here. And then the enemy's got two P-47 uh, Thunderbolts. Each player's got a big stack of cards, and this is like 112, 117, 16 cards, something crazy like that. So you have an Axis deck and an Allied deck, from which they kind of draw their hand. And the hand is based on, on a few different ratings here. So if you kind of look at these cards, um, we'll pick up the Germans here. So you've got your leader, this is the card that you're playing, and then you've got a wingman here, who he kind of just hope for the best. They draw like a mini hand um, and they sometimes do what you want them to but a lot of the time you don't have full control over them. Um, so you have a performance rating. This is your hand limit of seven and then you have a burst rating of two. This is kind of how powerful attacks you can do. Um, a ceiling value very high. It's just how high altitude you can go. Some of the early warplanes can only go high for example um, so we got some low level bombers that can't, they can't climb as high, so they're at a disadvantage there. And then you have this horsepower rating. This is subject to quite a lot of change. This is how many cards you can draw when you're filling your hand. Um, the wingman is much more simplified. They have an offensive value and a defensive value. Um, when they're doing attacks, they draw like a, you draw a mini hand for them of three cards. Try and use them. If not, you throw them away. But that's, that's really it. Uh, they've got a little health value in the corner that kind of actually faces away from you so the enemy can see how many hits they need to do to you. And there's a few different bits of a piece of information. You see the wingman it says wingman on it. It says fighter because they're fighters and then kind of the designation here of who and what they are. Um, and we'll take a quick look at the Thunderbolt here. We'll just pull one of them up because you'll see there's a, a couple differences. So these guys have like a special keyword for power boost. Uh, which means they start the game with a extra full throttle token. It's kind of a one-time use where they can kind of evade in certain situations. Uh, these guys have a lower burst value, uh, but they have this special little T for their horsepower, and that means that when they're at higher altitudes, they they are not penalized um, with their hand uh, with their hand limit because or with their hand draws. You know, it represents their turbocharged engines, so normally when you go at higher altitudes, 
you draw one less card, your horsepower goes down. But with the turbocharged engines, that's not the case. So they can keep filling their hands and fighting at higher altitudes. So you get a little bit of an advantage there. Um, but that's compensated by having a lower burst value versus the Fog Wolves that's got a two burst. And why that's important is to do with the action cards. Main bulk of the game is with these action cards. Um, if you look, this card, for example, it costs one of your two of your two bursts to play this card. One burst, and if it's successful, you do one hit. Now, what you might get into is this card does it takes three bursts and does three hits. Well, I've only got two, but this is this is where things start to get important. If I can manage to position myself to gain an advantage, I gain bursts, so I would be able to use that card. And to do that, we'll kind of line these up here. Oh, no, nope, that's the leader here. So what I might do on my turn is I might play this maneuver card, which is technically an attack, and it says improve position by one, or one extra burst against a wingman or formation aircraft. Well, I'm going to use it to try and improve my position. So I play my maneuver card, and I get to improve my position. And that's basically denoted by, I'm attacking you from the side, I've got advantage over you. In this instance, I have one extra burst, so I've got two plus one is three. Well, I can now use my three burst in my sights card, dagger, dagger, dagger. I'm going to try and shoot you down and do three damage to you. Again, if I'm successful, you take three damage. After five damage, this gets flipped to its reduced side. And, you'll, and it keeps that 5 damage, that carries over, and you'll notice the statistics here go down. The hand limit went from, what, 7 to 5, and the horsepower went down from 3 to 2, and you lose your turbo charge. So you've got to kind of start descending from very high altitudes there. If I take another 3 more hits, totally eliminated, and that's 5 VPs to the enemy. Um, it is possible from this position to gain another level of advantage, in which case you would be tailing the enemy. Tailing the enemy is the best position you can be in, because this gives you three extra bursts. So now you've got two plus three is five. I can fire this, and I can fire this as well, because I've got three plus one is four. If I had another one, I could do another burst, which I could fire this one as well, doing a total of five hits, because it's three hits here, one hit here, one hit here. Now. That's all kind of quite binary there. Let's see if we can't find some of the other ones. Um, so, for example, this one, it's one burst, but it's a cockpit hit. So you do one hit, and you reduce the performance rating to negative one. As you, sh you know, the pilot takes a hit in the arm, the, their hand limit is then reduced from seven down to six, for example. Oh, let's see. It's, so this one, you attack out of the sun, you know, you, you've got them, takes two bursts, but does three hits. And that's what's really cool is not all attack cards are born equal. So you get some, this one, you know, it's a one burst, but the payoff is two hits. So some of them are really good. And some of them, um, there's a few, let's see if I can't find one. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to on camera. Great. Um, there's some cards that do things like engine hits, or you blow up a fuel tank. And that just completely wrecks the plane, and they're immediately dead, basically. So I think right here we've got, uh, this is a tank, fuel tank hit, aircraft's destroyed, outright. So when, so when an enemy plays that on you, you better hope you have the right responses. It's in my sights, and this is an attack card. And so the enemy is going to then, you know, with their little hand of cards, they're like, oh, rats. So they're going to try and do a barrel roll to get away. This is a response to an In My Sights card. So I'm going to play that to counter the In My Sights. And that is a barrel roll. So then it comes back to the attacker's turn. Well, they have a barrel roll card. They're going to play the barrel roll because this barrel roll also counters a barrel roll. So I'm going to counter your counter. At which point the enemy is like, oh no, I'm starting to sweat. I've still got to get this done. I might say then, okay. I've got my ace pilot card in my hand. It's a response to any card because I don't have another card that counters a barrel roll. So I'm gonna play my ace, boom. And there, um, I don't have, I think the only counter to an ace pilot is another ace pilot, I believe. Um, so great, the defender wins. 
kind of that, that card off, so this card is ineffective, nothing happens. So it's all kind of discarded. The caveat being now is that I've only got two cards left in my hand. If he comes at me again hard, yeah, I might be in a really bad situation. But, but honestly, that's the crux of the game, is it's just these back and forth card play, trying to do it in as few cards as possible, um, trying to get position on your enemy so you'll find, yeah, I'm tailing him, the enemy's going to start playing their maneuver cards to get their position back to somewhat favorable. I might dive to a lower altitude, in which case I get to draw a card. Um, if I'm being tailed, that person can then follow me for free, which was bad. Or I might climb to a higher altitude, especially if I'm turbocharged. I might climb. I've got to discard a card to do that. But if the enemy wants to follow me, if he's got position on me, he's got to discard cards. And then he's going to be penalized at higher altitudes because he doesn't have the turbocharged, and I do. So there's uh, some really interesting back and forth there. But really, that's the game. Not a lot to it. Very fast playing tactical air war game. And we'll wrap up with some final thoughts here. Uh, so that was a look kind of just at how the game plays. Again, very simple, very easy to learn. There's a lot of paper in the rule book and the extra rule book, but the campaign, you know, you can leave that aside at first. Just pick up the dogfight rules. Very, very quick to learn. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, you, it doesn't have to be a 20 page rule book, but it is. But that's just because, again, like I said, it's for, for tournaments. tournaments. And, they, yeah. want, they want to be very precise with this. But yeah. the game's a blast. Uh, very quick playing. I had a great time. Uh, was there anything that maybe you didn't like in the game? Things that I didn't... Well, it, it's the same thing with any card game. Sometimes your draws suck. And, and yeah. although there's ways to mitigate that, you, you basically just don't take a turn. So you get hosed. Right, but you're you like, well, I'll go to cards. a high altitude. So right. to force them to do that once they right. die, maybe. So, I mean, that that's the only thing. And with a deck this big, you know, a two-inch deck, it's... My concern is always, unless you have a shuffling machine, yeah, it, it's hard to get the, get them shuffled that well. Um, I, I don't know that that's... I'm trying to search for something that I didn't like. I, I loved that it was fast, it was playable, very easy to pick up. Not a lot of war games are like this, where you can play... You know, you know a, this is a filler war game. I mean, you could play this... After you just slogged it out for six hours across the Eastern Front, and you could pick this up and play two games in 30 minutes before you go home. And I, I, I like that. I think this fills a really good niche in, in the market. And it's very small as well. Yeah. It's, it, this is a card game. It's not a board game. Uh, there, right. there, is a, there is a board here that is mostly for campaigns, but there's a tiny little dogfight track. But you could there's a counter that you can use to count up to six for six cents. Right. Um, so really, you... And you just turn the cards. You're not moving them around in, in like an area. This isn't like a, like it's not like Wings of War or X Wing where you've got a three by three and you know, move them around. Yeah. Everything is just a relative position, and you just turn your cards to yeah. simulate that with an altitude marker. Yeah. The, the huge air war has literally been condensed into basically four cards in a two player game and a, about a six by six. Six inch by six inch playing space. And it's, it's not very big. Yeah, you just got your four cards if you're playing a 2v2 and then a deck of cards. That's really it. Yeah. It's a little small pile of counters that you need. Yeah, and then you've got your altitude markers, which do the up and down part of the game. So we played, so it, it's interesting. Um, some of the other air war, we, war games we've played are much more wide open. Yeah. Um, wing leader, supremacy is the one that we most recently played. And it, it's a lot more complex and open because it, it uses a, a board. And th this really is just right in your face, right up front, very easy. You just turn the cards. I, I like it. Yeah, and I what like I, I, the other thing I like is the, the tactical nature of it. Yeah. Um, you, are mm -hmm. a, you are a pilot in a single engine craft. I had two engines in one of my... <laughs> yeah. Which was funny. But like, that that's it. And it's like, yeah. you are desperately trying to turn away or to position with one other person, basically. Sometimes yeah. two if they're, if they're wingman's doing well. And I, I felt that at times. You know, it's you're like, you've got your hand of cards and you're like, oh, this is a terrible hand. Like, how am I going to get yeah. out of this and not yeah. get shot down? Like, Ugh. So there's a cool, you know, some elements of tension. If you're, if you're kind of on the back foot, you're like, oh, i got to get out of this. You got a one of nine on your tail, and your wingman's yeah. not helping you out. You're like, oh, okay, yeah. So that was cool. It, you know, it's got some theme there as well, which is really neat. But uh, the reality is that that's wild blue yonder. There is so much in this box. Yeah, there's a, an ungodly amount of planes to play around with. You've got endless hours of fun. 
You'll need an opponent for this one. Um, there's no solitaire rules in this. I'm sure you could come up with one, but it... I mean, it, it's a reality of yeah. the counter versus... Uh, you can't counter what no. you already know about, right? And it's, apparently, Fall Down in Flames, DVG is creating a solitaire system. A solo system. system. Now, that's, that's for their, their locked on, kind of their, yeah. their Jet yeah. Fighters version. But we'll see if maybe we can kind of push that into into Wild Blue Yonder yeah. see what kind of a generic system we can come up with. But yeah, get, put, pull yourself up an opponent. 15 minutes. This is great. You can play this at work on your lunch break. You can play this mm -hmm. anywhere because it's small and compact and really, really easy and quick to learn. Yeah. And great game. So I appreciate you tuning in and watching. This has been Wild Blue Yonder from GMT Games. And I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com. And I'm Grant.